Hi, tennis fans. The Cause here with you. And welcome to the Daily Cause, bringing you the latest ATP, WGA, Davis and Fed Cup, college and junior tennis news and results, along with On This Day in Tennis History and Behind Scenes in Tennis Happenings. Hi, tennis fans. Today is Monday, December 22nd. Because of the ATP and WGA off-season schedule, we'll be highlighting the John Isner Ace for a Cure segment. Hey, tennis fans, you want a great tennis event? What do you do? You bring in America's best player, and we got him for you, John Isner. Stay with us for the exciting coverage. The 2014 Rousing Farah Ace for a Cure Tennis Fundraiser, featuring America's number one player, John Isner, to benefit the Federique's Taxia Research Alliance, opened with a congenial meet and greet reception with Big John Isner, who reached the career high of number nine in the world in April 2012. Marquee Sunday kicked off with a very fast moving, action packed, junior training tennis demonstration with the best juniors in the greater Tampa area conducted by tennis coaches Roberto Garcia and David Kuhlman. Next, the tennis history making happening took place on center court as the first in any tennis fundraising event ever paired two mixed doubles gender college coaching staffs locking horns as the University of South Florida were taking on the St. Leo University Lions. It was going to be a pride-driven match for Interstate 75 college tennis bragging rights. It was an honor for this tennis journalist to be in the MC's umpire's chair for this encounter. And the tennis fans were certainly getting their money's worth. Now it was showcase time. First on top, Tim Spichek career high 73 ATP ranked Alex Kuznetsov ATP career high 120 the ever so crowd entertaining Robert Kenrick ATP career high number 63 the singles match was balanced as Avila Country Club resident Isner brought out the best in his challenging tag team opponents as both sides of the net were disclosing dominant ground strokes prodigious serves along with full-court defensive scrambling. And it was the six foot 10 former University of Georgia Goliath as he evinced his neighbors why he reached top 10 world status with booming missile-like serves along with some lightning speed forehands, accompanied by some prudence and patience, finishing ahead of the field in this entertainingly competitive singles contest. Taking over the umpire's chair for this gala exposition, Scott Humphreys, former Wimbledon junior singles champ, the world-class pro-level tennis was continuing for the Farah Ace for a Cure crowd as the four tennis sharpshooters were staying on the court for more spirited and skilled action. The day was coming to a memorable completion as the dozen plus fans were going to face Big John's recorded 150 mile per hour serve as he was firing up the heat for the returners. A few fortuitous returners got the return award of the day to get the tennis Goliath serve back into play. 
Well, we've got to talk about shoes. I mean, you had your dancing shoes on, but you turned them into returning the big guy, John Isner, serve. How was the balance out there? And you got it back. Actually, it was a lot easier than I thought it would be. I think I could take them. John, or baby, you're part of the action here. You were right into it. What's it mean to be out here with Big John? Well, it's incredible. He's the best American tennis player, and to see him play live is pretty special because on TV it doesn't really capture how great of a tennis player he really is. Well, Alex, certainly a fun day out there for you, for John, for everybody. How much fun is it to get out there with Big John? Oh, it's a great. Um, John's a good friend of mine. We train together at Saddlebrook, so it's always great to come out here for such a good cause and to give back a little bit. Well, John's obviously a great guy. He's been very generous with his time, especially at this event. Uh, I know he does his own event every year, too, so he's uh, you know, a very giving person. The game seems to be still there. What does charity tennis exhibition mean to you these days? Uh, oh, it's great. I do a lot of uh, events like this. I'd love to help out. It's good to see these guys and uh, you know, giving back uh, for so many years that I played out there, and then just just helping out, and I enjoy it. All these guys know each other pretty well, and and we, they have fun with each other, and uh, you know, everybody is it can take a joke and, and give one as well. So it's, it's a fun setting. I'm very good friends with the uh, with the uh, Avery family. Paul and Suzanne are, are, are very close to me, and everyone in this neighborhood supports the cause. Everyone in Tampa supports the cause. And they, people came came from all over to uh, watch us play tennis and, and raise a lot of money. So for me, just to be a um, be a small part of of the of the money that that that, that Farah is raising is fantastic. They've raised so much money, and if I can help out in uh, in any way, um, I'm always willing to do it. Rick, what a great event. You're always part of it. What's this mean to you to be part of Farrah? It's outstanding. It's not about us. The truth is, John comes here, gives his time. He's an outstanding person, a great athlete, but really a great guy. He's behind me signing autographs. He sticks here. This is about finding a cure for Friedrich's ataxia. We've got to do that. Farrah is a wonderful organization. It's wonderful to see the whole community come out and really support a family here that we're trying to help. We know the underlying cause of this disease and we're focusing our research to solve that problem. And every dollar raised here today is going towards that mission. Farah is the Friedrichs Ataxia Research Alliance, which is what my wife Rachel and I founded 16 years ago. Friedrichs Ataxia is a rare neuromuscular disease that attacks almost universally throughout the body. So you lose some hearing, speech, and vision. You get severe scoliosis or curvature of the spine, uh, requiring implantation of metal rods. Uh, you uh, lose strength and coordination in all four limbs, so you're usually in a wheelchair by your mid-teens. You have uh, increased risk of diabetes. You also have the most uh, condemning symptom is the cardiovascular symptom. It's the um, cardiomyopathy that leads to uh, congestive heart failure, which is the, the reason most of our patients die young. Um, and it's the, the cause of our son's death. He was diagnosed at age 11 and we lost him at age 24 due to the um, congestive heart failure. Paul, unfortunately, you only know this disease too well, with some family members being affected. What's it like waiting for the cure? It's taking so much longer. As a parent, you can only imagine how long it takes for this disease to get cured. Um, but our team continues to work at light speed compared to an average drug development time. But it's just, uh, you know, each and every day is just a challenging day as you watch your children uh, decline in capabilities when in their this period of their lives they're supposed to be jumping higher and running faster and just becoming stronger and stronger. This cause has created an emotional attachment like I've never felt before. To see the progression and what Farah has done for this disease, um, the Averys, everybody here, is it, it touches my heart. They are really going strong and it's a wonderful event and I'm glad to be a part of it. Uh, the cause is uh, very uh, near and dear to my wife and I and it's just important to us uh, to stay local in community efforts. Uh, Paul and Susanna become uh, closer and closer 
uh, friends to us and their daughters, and it, uh, it's great to be here. But we've, we've been associated with FARA, I think, for seven or eight years now, and it's really nice to see the progress that they've made year after year. It's like tenfold year after year, and, and we're, we hope that there's a cure soon. Uh, I think any time that you're supporting a good cause, uh, it's, uh, it's, it means a lot. And, uh, and again, we started this event because of one of our members. Finding the cure for this, this disease, uh, that uh, they're, they're so close to finding, that's the idea. And, uh, and, and that's why we, we keep on doing this event. That's why we're so excited about this. And on this day in tennis history, December 22nd, 1985, after Boris Becker deadlocks the Davis Cup tie by defeating Mats V. Lander in four sets. World number four, Stefan Edberg, clinches the Davis Cup tie for Sweden, defeating West Germans. ATP 51st ranked, Michael Westfall in four sets. In the decisive rubber in Munich, Germany. Hey, thanks for joining us on The Daily Cause. Hope that you're with us again. Until then, remember that in tennis scoring, love means nothing. But love of the game means everything. Keep alive your love of the game. Love you tennis fans. And we'll see you again soon.